I'm Steph Strickland with GeekWire Studios here at AWS reInvent 2024, and we are here to talk health tech, specifically Evanova. I would like to introduce you to my two guests right now. We've got Adib Mahmoud, the Senior Director, Head of Cybersecurity at Evanova, as well as Scott Francis, the Security Innovation Principal Director at Accenture. Thank you, gentlemen, both for being here. I appreciate your time today. Happy to be here. We're going to talk about this partnership. It's multifaceted. You have Accenture, you have AWS, uh, you also have Evanova coming together to really overcome some unique challenges in this health tech space, talking about really stringent um, compliance regulations and challenges. So let me start by asking you, how did this whole journey begin? Yeah, I mean, well, for Evanova, we've been around for about a year now, uh, and really our story begins several years ago. Uh, we are a digital health business uh, that is part of AstraZeneca Group. And so a number of years ago, AstraZeneca has invested a lot into kind of their digital health portfolio to help drive how we develop therapeutics uh, across all of our you know, areas. And so they've realized that, hey, there's value in starting to share some of what we've built and learned across the life sciences sector and really help drive some of the connectivity that's needed versus being super fragmented. And some of the ideas also lend itself well to standardization when you talk about regulations that govern how pharmaceuticals make their way to the market. So Evanova came about and the idea was to make it available to external customers, other pharmaceuticals, other you know, key players in the biopharma market. And that's where Accenture and, and AWS came along. Uh, you know, we are a digital health provider operating in the cloud, so we wanted to bring the best of both. Have AWS as our infrastructure partner, and then have Accenture with their deep expertise across our entire tech stack to really help us build a globally scaled offering, but then also having the expertise to navigate some of the compliance rigors that we have operating again in a global scale and in a heavily regulated environment. It, he's speaking your language. He's talking cloud, he's talking AWS, and he's talking Accenture. So tell me a little bit about your involvement. This was unique. This is, a, a Evanova was yeah. a unique client. When we came in with Amazon, we wanted to help not just build their platform, but help them craft tooling and policy and process that streamlines to the greatest degree possible what is needed to maintain compliance. When we do these segments, I really love the opportunity to talk about some real world impact. So when we're talking about enterprise operations, specifically in the regulatory space or beyond, can you give me a, a tangible example of how this has actually come together in practice? Yeah, so one of the challenges that Scott mentioned, right, is when you're constrained with resources and you're trying to build a company at a global scale, but also manage compliance, you know, what takes priority? And so one of the things that we were able to do together is leverage AI, leverage real-time analytics to help us kind of do the heavy lifting on checking our systems for compliance, checking our infrastructure for compliance, while having our human resources work on the more strategic aspects, right? So we're able to discover what is an issue in a more you know, real-time fashion, but then use you know, human brain power to come up with what is the actual strategy to do something about it. Yep. Whereas traditionally, you're spending a lot of time just finding where are the issues and where's the misconfiguration. With our kind of out of the box approach, together we've been able to cut down that time considerably with using next generation technology. Yeah. I see you nodding in agreement. Give me your perspective yeah, on this. Yeah, so this was kind of the outcome of something that we started working on with Amazon's Global Partner Security Initiative about a year ago. We started working on Gen AI enabled security tooling that you know, as we've heard, there is a lot of what Amazon likes to call undifferentiated heavy lifting, things that are tedious, things that are repetitive, things that are very much the same thing over and over and over again. Those kinds of workloads are a great fit for AI and machine learning in particular because they're well-defined, they're constrained, and it's something that we can offload to computers and free up humans to do the things that humans do best. So, in conjunction with Amazon, we designed a platform that uses Bedrock, it uses Security Lake, it uses Config and Security Hub, and we take in security event data, we ingest regulatory frameworks, we ingest the AWS well-architected library and all the white papers, and we form a baseline internally of what it looks like to be compliant with whatever set of compliance frameworks that the customer cares about. And the outcome of all this is, this is the baseline, this is what you actually have. The delta are your findings. This is how they map to NIST 800-53 or GDPR or PCI or whatever. And by the way, here's some recommended automation code from the system to automatically fix it. Terraform, CloudFormation, whatever it is. So we're really leveraging a lot of 
what's available through Bedrock and some of these other services, but we're applying it to a very well understood, long standing business problem rather than, you know, working on an experimental thing or, you know, maybe something that's kind of a proof of concept. Where Evanova is successful, I think a lot of companies will be successful because you guys really are laying the groundwork here for something that is uh, certainly unique. Out of curiosity, for you, as you have embarked on this challenge for the past year or so, um, what's around the corner for you? What is the thing that you are focused on trying to tackle next? Keeping up with you know the changing regulatory environment, you know, like you mentioned, we're globally focused, and so every kind of region has their own nuances that you need to stay ahead of. And also the, the market that we play in, uh, you don't have the benefit of thousands of customers. You have a very kind of finite mix of biopharma players. And so it's ensuring that you know, what is concerning to them, we're addressing early on because we want to be a trusted business partner to all of them. Um, so for me, it's really staying ahead of what is the regulatory challenge? What is the new cyber threats that we should be aware of today so that we can take advantage of some of these proactive measures uh, and give that confidence back to our customers. Let me ask you finally, what takeaways would you offer for companies out there that are seeing this and thinking to themselves, wait, maybe I am more nimble. Maybe this, my organization is more nimble based on what you're telling me. What takeaways would you so, offer to them? One thing that we've seen a lot in the last, call it year, two years with the rise of AI is there's a lot of mandate about, we need to adopt this technology. It frequently comes from boards, comes from C-level executives. The challenge has been, what we're hearing from our clients is that we have a mandate to use tech, but we don't always have a good idea of what problem it is that we're trying to solve. So my first piece of advice for customers is make sure you understand what are your biggest pain points? What problems are you really trying to solve? Make sure that you work backwards from business outcomes that you want to people and process and who owns it within your org and then back to the technology input that's going to get you there. Solid. Scott, Adib, thank you very much for making the time coming down here yeah, today. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. I'm Steph Strickland. You're watching GeekWire Studios.